This is part 14 of Angular tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss event binding in Angular with examples. These bindings that we have discussed so far flow data in one direction, that is, from a component class property to an HTML element property. How about flowing data in the opposite direction? When we have a web form, we will have a variety of controls on that web form. For example, we'll have a text box, drop down list, button, images, etc. When a user visits a web form like that, he will perform a variety of actions like selecting from a drop down list, typing into a text box, clicking on a button or as simple as hovering over image elements. When a user performs these actions, their corresponding events are raised and when these events happen, we want to be notified about them within our component so we can react to those events. That's when we use event binding. So in short, we can say event binding flows data in the opposite direction, that is, from an HTML element to a component. This is the same project that we have been working with so far in this video series. Now let's look at a simple example of binding to click event of a button element. So within the inline view template here, let's include a button element and then within a pair of parentheses, we specify our target event to which we want to bind. In our case, we want to bind to the click event of the button. So we specify that event within a pair of parentheses like this. Remember, with property binding, we use a pair of square brackets and with event binding, we use a pair of parentheses and then we specify the equal to symbol and then the name of the method to be notified when this event is raised. In our case, we want this method on click to be notified when this event is raised. We don't have this method yet. We'll create that in just a bit. Now let's include this text on the button. Click me and finally close the button. So the name of the function that will be notified when this event is raised is on click and we define that method within our component class and write code to react to that event. So within our component class, let's include this method on click. This method is not going to return anything. So let's specify the return type as void. And all we want this method to do is log this message to the console button clicked. So with all these changes, let's run our project by pressing Ctrl F5, launch browser developer tools and click the console tab. And look at this, when we click the button, notice the message button clicked is logged to the console. So every time we click the button, the message is logged and the counter value goes up. And here is the syntax for event binding. We also have an alternative syntax for event binding. Instead of including the event name in a pair of parentheses like this, we can also use on dash event name variation. So in this case, on dash click. And this is the method to be notified when this event is raised. Let's save our changes and reload this web page one more time by pressing Ctrl F5. And when we click the button, it works exactly the same way as before. So this alternative style of event binding is called canonical form. Now let's look at a slightly complex example of event binding. So here is what we want to do. When the web page initially loads, we only want to show first name and last name of an employee. And then we also want to have this button show details. When we click this show details button, we also want to display their gender and age. And the text on the button should change to hide details. And when we click this hide details button, we want to hide gender and age. In short, the web page should revert to this state and the text on the button also should change to show details. So let's see how to implement this with event binding. We are going to make use of the employee component that we implemented in one of our previous videos in this series. And here is that employee component. Within the employee component class, I'm going to introduce a property. I'm going to call it show details. This is going to be of type boolean and let's set it to a default value of false. Remember, when the web page initially loads, we don't want to show their additional details like gender and age. So that's the reason we are setting it to a default value of false. I'm also going to include a method here. I'm going to call it toggle details. And this method is not going to return anything. So I'm going to set the return type to 
void and all this method is going to do is toggle the value that we have within the show details property so this dot show details equals exclamation this dot show details so if this property has a value of true this method will change it to false if it has false it will change it to true and within the root component let's include this selector my employee as a directive so instead of the button we are going to use my employee here so with all these changes in place let's reload our web page notice at the moment we don't have show details button so let's include that now within the view template of our employee component just after this table let's include a break element and then a button element the text on the button is going to say show details and we want to bind to the click event of this button so within a pair of parentheses we specify the name of our target event which is click in this case and then equal to sign and then the name of the method to be notified when this click event is raised remember we want this method to be notified toggle details so we specify that method right here let's save our changes and reload our web page notice at the moment when we click the show details button nothing happens that's because when we click the button we call this method toggle details and all this method does is toggle the value we have in this show details property now to dynamically show and hide these two tr elements gender and age we are going to make use of a built-in structural directive provided by angular and that directive is ngf so on the gender and age tr elements i'm going to use this ngf structural directive notice the star in front of ngf indicates that it's a structural directive and we are binding it to show details property so this ngf directive is going to dynamically add or remove these tr elements depending on the value that we have in this show details property if we have a value of true in this show details property then this tr element is added to the dom if we have a value of false then it is removed from the dom we have other structural directives as well provided by angular we'll discuss all those structural directives in detail in our upcoming videos so with all these changes in place let's reload our web page notice on the initial page load gender and age rows are hidden that's because if you recollect we have set show details default value to false and we have binded ngf directive to that property since this property has a default value of false this ngf is going to remove these two tr elements from the dom and that's the reason we don't see those two rows on the initial page load when we click the button the rows appear that's because when this button is clicked we are calling this method toggle details which toggles the value that we have in this property show details the default value was false so when we click the button the first time it changes that value to true and when the value is true this ngf is going to add those two tr elements back to the dom and that's the reason we see those two rows again when we click the button again those rows are removed when we click it again those are added back so the only problem at the moment is the text on this button all the time it says show details depending on whether these rows are displayed or not we want to change the text on the button dynamically so to do that we are going to use ternary operator so if this property show details is true then we want to display this string hide else show and then to that we want to append details so let's save our changes and reload our web page notice now it works as expected when the rows are hidden it says show details when the rows are displayed it says hide details and here is the code which we just discussed thank you for listening and have a great day